Taylor Swift definitely has a lot to celebrate and we are celebrating her over here too because Lover has been a huge success and she's accomplished so much just this year alone. But now she's speaking out about some of the struggles that she's dealt with in the industry, specifically being a woman. What's up y'all, it's Amelia Jr. here with Clever News. Happy Halloween. Now we're sure you would agree that Taylor Swift is one of the best songwriters of our generation. In fact, she's recently been using her music to speak out about issues close to her heart and really use her influence to make a change. So Wednesday, Taylor tweeted a link to her interview with Zane Lowe from Beach One Radio on Apple Music. She said, we talked emo bands, favorite lyricists, Hey P. Wentz and Lana Del Rey, zingers, and so much more. Full interview with Zane Lowe is live on Beats One Apple Music. Now, of course, we had to go listen to see what Taylor was talking about in this interview, and Taylor really opened up. So like she said in her tweet, she admitted that if she had to pick her favorite lyricist, it would be between Pete Wentz and Lana Del Rey, but she also talked about the pressure of releasing new albums. Everything you do is a standing ovation on your first record if you're having that breakthrough record. And then you put out your second body of work, and then you realize that everything you're putting out now is being compared to what they liked about your first record. She goes on to say, but then you put out the third one, and then it's being compared to the first two. And then you put out the fourth one, and it's compared to the first three. And it goes on and on and on. By the time you're on album seven, you have such a strange, convoluted relationship with your previous work. And I knew with this album, it was like something that was almost a return to form. I mean, we can't imagine the pressure of continuing to build on your success, but Taylor has done a fantastic job of continuing to set the bar higher. In fact, Taylor holds the record for the highest selling album artist of the decade at over 26 million in US sales plus streaming. She also is the artist with the most weeks spent at number one on Billboard's Artist 100 chart with 37 weeks. And she's the number one female touring artist of the 2010s with a tour gross of $910 million. But let's get back to this interview because Taylor continued to talk about working with such talented collaborators. She also showed some love for Halsey and her writing and she said that she's really into reading political news right now. However, one of our favorite moments was Taylor talking about how she's able to separate her art from other people's opinions of her and her music. Zane said, quote, you've got these songs that definitely welcome people into your world, and yet you're able to keep yourself distant from that scrutiny. How do you do that? And here's what Taylor had to say. You know, there's a lot of things that I tell myself when I'm kind of panicking, and one of the things that I tell myself is like, this is part of it. This is normal. She continued on to say that she gives this same advice to new artists and said that she tells them, do not let anything stop you from making art. Make things, never stop making things. But because she was opening up about dealing with scrutiny, Zane asked her, when was the hardest? When was the toughest? And Taylor's answer really put things into perspective. She said, when I was like 23 and people were just kind of reducing me to, kind of making slideshows of my dating life and putting people in there that I'd sat next to at a party once and deciding that my songwriting was like a trick rather than a skill and a craft, but she didn't stop there. What she said next is what really has people talking. Taylor specifically said that it's a way to take a woman who's doing her job and who's succeeding at doing her job and making things. In a way, it's figuring out how to completely minimize that skill. I'll let her finish this thought. By taking something that everyone, you know, in their darkest, darkest moments loves to do, which is to slut shame. Of course, this isn't uncommon for artists, specifically female artists. Unfortunately, a lot of times the focus gets put on things that aren't related to their music. And when you are putting your all into your work, it has to be frustrating for people to not take you seriously and try to diminish your work. Taylor has obviously proven that she is not to be messed with, but she did go on to say, I don't think people understand how easy it is to infer that someone who's a female artist or a female in our industry is somehow doing something wrong by wanting love, wanting money, wanting success. Women are not allowed to want those things the way that men are allowed to want them. We're glad that she's speaking out about this and regardless of how you feel about Taylor, she will be receiving a huge honor that will force you to put some respect on her name. The showrunners of the American Music Awards announced yesterday that they will be giving one person the title of Artist of the Decade at the show later this year. And since we are talking about her, you know who I'm talking about, it's gonna be Taylor Swift. Now, of course, there are mixed reactions on the internet, but when is there not? This is a huge honor to be called the Artist of the Decade. The AMAs announced her win on Twitter saying she's won more AMAs than anyone this decade. She's a five-time 2019 AMAs nominee and she's performing at this year's AMAs Live on November 24th. Taylor Swift is our Artist of the Decade. Taylor, who already won 24 American Music Awards as well as 295 awards in total over her long career, has more Artist of the Year wins than anybody else in AMA history. Last time Taylor was nominated for an American Music Award was just last year in 2018, when Reputation was up for Artist of the Year, Tour of the Year, Favorite Pop Rock Female Artist, and Favorite Pop Rock Album. 
Now we're super excited to see what song Taylor performs at the AMAs this year, but in the meantime, I wanna hear from you. Do you agree with what Taylor had to say? And are you excited about her being honored at the AMAs? Let me know what you think in the comments section below. And then make sure you subscribe to Clever News and we'll keep you updated on this story and any other music news that we hear through the pipeline. Click right over here to watch another brand new story. I'm Emil Ennis Jr. Again, happy Halloween. Thank you for watching Clever News and I'll see you soon. Pennywise?